would your life change if you could make an extra 100, 1,000, or even $10,000 a month? If you clicked on this video, you understand how important it is to have a second source of income, one that can buy your freedom back, buy time with family, time to spend on your hobbies, and time to do what you want with your life. To help you do that, today you learn the best way to make money online, something that will finally click and you'll actually want to keep doing. And this is all without any paid advertising, any marketing, no cold calling, or even creating your own product. Because in this video, we're going to cover everything you need to build a $10,000 business in the next 45 days, elbow grease not included, you are going to have to work hard at your financial freedom. If you put effort into what I'm about to show you, you will be able to accomplish your goals because this framework has helped 18 year olds make more money than a lawyer. It's helped stay at home moms replace their household income, and it's even helped 50 year old veterans finally get their actual deserved retirement. So if you take diligent notes and put away all the distractions during this video, turn off Fortnite, put away Snapchat, put away TikTok. And then after this video, I want you to click out of YouTube. Don't watch another YouTube video. Don't think about it. Go take simple action because by the end of this video, you'll have a clear path and you know exactly what to do to make your first $10,000 online. Because the fact of the matter is that selling on Amazon has changed. Back when I was working for minimum wage, I used to think that selling on Amazon involved doing a bunch of fancy work, creating ads, creating a product, all those things that I told you we do not need to do. So I'm going to show you the exact roadmap that allowed me to go from this kid right here, making $10 an hour to eventually starting my own business, selling used books. You can see I was super happy selling used books. I was making good money before I eventually landed on the business I'm showing you today that allowed me to sell over $400,000 in one month on Amazon. The best part about this business for me is that I'm able to run it from anywhere in the world, from any computer in less than an hour a day. In this picture here, I was spending some time at an all-inclusive resort in Mexico while my Amazon business kept making money for me in the background. I've been able to sell millions on Amazon with this model, but it's not just working for me. This is Sam right here. She was about to have a baby when she started her Amazon business. Three months into starting her business, she had her baby. That very same month, she sold over $50,000. And then later that same year in December, she sold over $250,000 with a newborn baby. And her story honestly put me to shame seeing what's possible when you give this business genuine effort. This guy over here on the right is our friend Tom. Tom started selling on Amazon and within a year, he was already a seven figure seller. And this most recent December, less than two years into his journey, he already is crushing the results I've been able to get. And he just did over $600,000 in one single month. Those two are just very quick examples. It's also worked for all of these guys and gals right here. And no matter what background they came from, everyone from James to Michael to Joe to Paulo, everyone was able to find success in this business, showing you the exact framework I'm about to show you. So here's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to show you everything you need to get your business set up. We're going to talk about what supplies you need, where I'm going to show you exactly how to find winning products. I'm going to show you why this business is or is not right for you compared to other businesses. I'm going to answer all of the common newbie questions. I'm going to show you how to make your first sales much faster than the average person, even the average person who starts Amazon on their own. I'm going to show you how to get ungated to sell big name brand products. I'm going to show you all the free and paid tools you need to use. And I'm also going to show you how I've personally been able to grow my business to over $2 million a year with less than an hour a day of my time. But before we do that, let's zoom out a little bit. The opportunity is huge. Over half of all e-commerce sales happen on Amazon. And an even crazier part is over half of those sales are to people like you and I. So what this means is that one out of every $5 spent online in general is going to people like you and I, and most people make it way too complicated on themselves to get their piece of that pie. So today you're going to learn the simplest way that actually works. So I'm sure this sounds great at this point, but how do you even make sales without marketing? This is one of the most common fears that new sellers end up asking. So the way it works is that sales on Amazon are evenly split between sellers. Typically, this is going to be if you have the same price or the same fulfillment speed, but honestly, you can often charge way more than your competitors and still make a sale. So if that's true, and all you have to do is list an item on Amazon for you to make a sale, then your only job is to find items that sell well. And then once you have those items for sale, all your buyer has to do is click add to cart like you and I have both done probably hundreds of times shopping on Amazon ourselves, and then you get to collect your profits. So if finding cheap items that sell well is the goal, how do you find those? This is how online arbitrage works. And this is the business that led to my results as well as all of the results on screen that I just showed you, because you can build a multi-million dollar business simply by buying items from websites like target.com and flipping those items on Amazon. And once you do find them, Amazon does all the heavy lifting. They're going to handle everything from customer service to shipping the order out on time. Your only goal is to use online arbitrage to find cheap products that sell well. For example, here's a quick recent product that I found. So this pair of shoes was selling on Dick's Sporting Goods for about $61. The exact same pair of shoes sells on Amazon for $108. And split between all the different variations on this listing, it sells over a thousand times a month, as you can see on 
Selleramp, which leaves you with a profit of $22 every single time that item sells. And this video is going to show you how to get approved to sell items just like this Nike shoe and how to find more winning products for yourself. Here's another example of a product that was fantastic for our business. It's a random herbal tea. Honestly, I had no idea what it was about when I bought the product. But the beautiful part of this business model is all you have to do is buy cheap items that sell well on Amazon and use the data to know if it's going to sell. But like I've been saying, all we have to do is buy cheap items that sell well. Even if you don't know what it is, or even if it's not in a niche you're familiar with, you can make tons of money. See this product right here made us over $2,000 in profit. All we did was buy this item from a website called Vitacost. We bought hundreds of boxes of this at a time, made it into a two pack, shipped it off to Amazon and Amazon did the rest of the heavy lifting while we kept continuing to look for other profitable items. And if you're watching this video, there's a good shot. You've seen other videos or other business models in Amazon out there. So why should you do online arbitrage versus some of the more popular models or the models that more people are doing, right? So private label is one that you'll see all over YouTube. This is where you're going to buy a product from China. You're going to buy from Alibaba. You're going to create your own packaging, create your own product, create your own branding. And then after you wait a month or two for that product to ship from overseas, you're still going to be competing with those Chinese sellers. Not to mention the fact that if this is your first business, you do not want to have all the moving parts of creating a brand, learning how to leverage marketing, learning how to negotiate with suppliers. You need less moving parts in your business if you want to grow something quickly. Wholesale is another common one that you'll see out there. This is where you buy from big distributors. You're buying from brands directly. You can buy truckloads at a time, pallets at a time, whatever it is that you can afford. And I honestly really like the wholesale model. I sell via the wholesale model as well, but it's not the best method for you who's looking to start a business because you're going to make very expensive mistakes. If you don't know what to look for in a product, you can make multi-thousand dollar mistakes literally daily with wholesale. Not to mention the fact that if you're uncomfortable with making cold calls or talking to suppliers all the time, that business is probably not going to be a ton of fun for you to run. Retail arbitrage is another common one you'll see out there. This is where you just go out to stores like the Nike outlets. You go to Marshalls, Ross, whatever physical stores that you have nearby. And then you scan the products on the shelf with an app like Selleramp or just the Amazon seller app looking for products that are underpriced. This is another great way to get your feet wet in Amazon. But if you're anything like me, you don't want to be driving around from store to store all day and you want something that's going to be scalable while you're sitting at home or even being able to hire people to do the work for you. Used books is how I personally started selling on Amazon like I told you guys earlier. And this is where you're just buying $1 books, you buy 50 cent books or even free books from local yard sales. And then you flip those books and turn it into 10, 20 or even $100 at a time. This is a fantastic way to sell on Amazon, but it's not a fantastic way to make $10,000 as fast as possible. And especially not going to be able to scale this business to doing seven figures a year like you are able to do with an online arbitrage business. And the last one that I should barely even put on here is drop shipping. This is a speed run to getting banned on Amazon unless you do it by very specific rules, drop shipping from big, massive wholesale suppliers. If you're buying from retailers and shipping to customers on Amazon, that is completely against the terms of service and it will get you banned. Anyone who's telling you otherwise does not have your best interest in mind. So now that you're ready to start online arbitrage, here's how you can get rolling as soon as possible. So you want to go to sell.amazon.com. It's $40 a month for a professional account. It's not essential for you to sign up for that when you do get started, but that $40 a month is going to save you $1 per item sold. So it breaks even when you sell your first 40 items. And it also allows you to integrate software and tools that are going to power up your Amazon business. And we'll talk about that here later. In terms of actually getting the business set up, you just need a bank account, a credit card. And the answer to a common question I get all the time is that you do not need an LLC. So don't let the initial paperwork of starting this business slow you down. You need to get on your verification phone call, or sometimes they'll send you a postcard as soon as possible so that you can get in and start testing the concept. And I'll also add the disclaimer that I'm obviously not a lawyer. So talk to your lawyer if you think you have personal assets or anything like that, that you might want to protect through an LLC. So if you haven't done this already, pause the video right here, go sign up for your Amazon seller account and come back. And while you're waiting for Amazon, do not waste this time. You can use it very valuably if you do what I like to call paper trading. So if you have ever done stock trading, this is basically where you're pretending to trade stocks and you have a fake portfolio of stocks that you've traded over time. The same concept can be true in Amazon. So even while you're waiting for your Amazon account to get set up, you should still be looking for items to buy using the methods that I'm going to show you today. Write that item down, write the price down that you would have been able to buy that item at. And then a couple weeks to a month later, go look at that item's price and see if you would have made a good decision, if you would have made a profit, or if there was something you missed about the product. This is going to give you some great hands-on experience, but it's also going to provide proof of concept. 
concept. Proof of concept is going to be everything for your business, not because it's logically the most important, but psychologically, it's extremely important for you to find that first item. Even if you don't physically buy it, you need to be able to see that proof of concept that, hey, I could buy this item or, hey, I did buy this item. I made a sale. And then you need to see it to believe it's real before your brain is ever going to allow you to put any kind of capital or believe in the outcome of working hard on your business. So as you are looking for products like those Nike shoes that we were looking at there, how do you actually get approved to sell those name brands? People gatekeeping this information for me forced me to grow slowly for so long. When I started selling on Amazon in 2018, there was very little great information out there. And I've tried to solve that with the videos on my channel and especially making this free course here. So all you need to do to get approved to sell a brand like Nike or any of the brands that we're going to look at today while we're sourcing for products is you need to be able to buy 10 units of whatever item you're hoping to get ungated in or get approved to sell ungated as the term that Amazon uses. And you're going to have to buy those 10 units from any legitimate wholesaler or any legitimate online website. And when you do buy those items, you need to make sure that the information that you give them matches exactly what's on your seller account, including the address, the business name, and any kind of contact information that needs to match what's on your seller account so that they can verify that it was you that bought the products. After you have an online order confirmation or an invoice from your supplier, save it as a PDF and then submit this document to Amazon. A lot of people will do this process, get it completely right by the book, and for whatever reason, Amazon ends up denying it. So if that's you, please keep resubmitting until Amazon does accept your invoice. It's what we have to deal with even as veteran Amazon sellers. Unfortunately, there's always going to be some frustrations with the platform of any business you start. And for selling on Amazon, sometimes that's being forced to submit documents more than once. So if you do get denied, please resubmit. And I'll also mention that all the little topics we'll talk about here today during this free course, there's going to be more in-depth videos that show you all the nitty gritty of each one of these steps. So for example, I have a complete video on ungating on my channel that you can go check out if you need a little bit more hand-holding on this process. But don't let anyone tell you that you can't sell big name brand products on Amazon because this is what has allowed me to do multiple millions and help all the people that I've already showed you accomplish their financial goals. So now you know how to get approved to sell these big name brand products that we're going to be finding, but what other stuff do I need to get set up? And fortunately, the answer is very little. So you need the bare basics, which are going to be boxes. If you plan on shipping all of your items off to Amazon FBA, I would recommend buying the boxes at Walmart, Lowe's, U-Haul, wherever you want to buy cheap boxes. Just make sure that they are under 25 inches in all dimensions. Otherwise, Amazon is going to think your box is too big. Just as a quick note, you're also going to want a scale, like a shipping scale that goes up to a couple hundred pounds. You can get these on Amazon for 30 or 40 bucks. You're going to need what are called SKU labels. So if you have a regular printer at home already, you're going to buy 30 up labels. Or if you go with the optional Rolo or Dymo laser printer, you're going to get the custom rolls for that laser printer. But that's definitely not an essential. And I started my Amazon business off of a regular printer with 30 up labels. And I was doing that for a very long time. The other thing you're going to want on top of that is just a simple tape gun and tape so that you can box up all your products and ship them off to Amazon and keep them nice and safe. So now you've got your hard physical supplies. In terms of software, this is where a lot of people go wrong. You just need to keep it lean and effective. Do not over invest in a ton of super fancy expensive softwares before you ever have that proof of concept. All you need is Celerant, which for full disclosure is our product research tool and another tool called Keepa, which is essential for pretty much any Amazon business. That is literally it. Do not invest more money than this in software, especially if you don't have a lot of money to start a business right now. I don't want you to throw away all of your money to big software companies while you're trying to make ends meet. And then everybody's favorite version of a tool, which is a free one, you're going to want to leverage a couple of these to get coupons, which are going to help you save money, get your inventory way cheaper. You're going to get Capital One Shopping. That's a free Chrome extension. You're going to also get a ton of cash back with this business as you're buying from tons of different websites. In fact, cash back alone actually covers my entire cost of living, which is a pretty awesome side effect of running this business. And to make sure you're maximizing your cash back, I like to use services like Top Cashback or Rakuten. You're also going to be able to leverage gift cards, specifically buying discounted gift cards. For example, you can buy a $50 gift card to Ulta.com for $45 and then spend that $50 while you've saved 10% by buying gift cards at websites like Raise. You're also going to want to set up an extra email address or what's called a catch-all email address. And this is going to allow you to infinitely loop coupon codes or anytime there's an email sign up, you can often get 10, 15, 20% off just by putting in an email address, which you probably don't want spamming your personal emails. With all that in mind, let's use these free and paid software tools to go actually find a profitable product that you can sell for yourself. But first, I want to answer a few of the questions that are probably still on your mind. How much money do you need to start this business? The short answer is invest whatever you're comfortable with. For me, I started this business when I had about $1,500. That was all I had to my name. And so I was willing to invest a pretty good amount of that simply buying used books, buying products like the ones 
ones we'll look at today. I wouldn't recommend starting the online arbitrage business with less than $1,000. And if you have somewhere around two to $3,000, that's gonna be a fantastic start. Another super common question is how much space do you need for this business? Do I need an entire warehouse? And luckily you can save some money. You don't need the big fancy warehouse. Even as much fun as it would be to have the warehouse to do donuts on a pallet jack, you simply do not need the warehouse to start out. If you have an extra room in your house or even half of a room, an area in your office, that's really all you're gonna need to start your Amazon business. And if you genuinely have no space or can't receive any physical product, you don't need to use any space at all. You can leverage what are called prep centers and we'll go over those towards the end of the video. Another common question people ask when they start Amazon is, am I gonna have to make a bunch of phone calls? Am I gonna have to talk to suppliers all the time? For me, this was really important. When I started my business, I wanted to just be able to work on it whenever I wanted. I was a college student at the time I started my business. And so I knew I would need to be very flexible with my hours and not necessarily making phone calls during business hours. So luckily you can purchase on these websites, buy products whenever you want, whenever it's convenient for you. Like I was talking about earlier, it's been perfect for stay-at-home moms, busy college students. Whenever you can make it fit into your life, your Amazon business can work for you. How much are you actually gonna profit in this business model? This is a question that a ton of people will refuse to answer, and so I wanna give it to you straight. The average online arbitrage seller is probably gonna be making anywhere from 15 to 20% net margin, which is magnitudes higher than the average business in the retail industry. And if you wanna get your business down to the part where it's almost fully automated, you're probably gonna be running a little bit closer to 10% net margin. But I've also seen people work really hard. They're going out to a lot of stores. They're doing local pickups. They're buying tons of products online that just other people are simply missing, and they're close to 25 or even 30% net profit. It's all up to you and it's all up to how you want to run your business. But I would say conservatively, you're probably going to run between 15 to 20%. And another super common question I get is how do I get paid by Amazon? When do I get paid by Amazon? Amazon's going to pay you every two weeks and they're going to pay you out through a direct deposit into your bank account, the one that's linked to your seller account. So I have a ton more to break down for you in this video. Like I said, this video is going to cover everything you need to sell your first $10,000 on Amazon. But first, let's get into the first and most important step of the process of selling on Amazon, which is simply finding profitable products. In a second, we'll dive into the computer and I'll give you a specific step-by-step. -step. Before that, I wanted to explain in simple terms how we're gonna be finding these items. It's called the reverse sourcing method. And how it works is using tools like Keepa and Selleramp, we can look specifically at the products that other successful Amazon sellers are already selling. And once we're looking at their items, our only job is to find them as cheap as humanly possible. So this next section of the free course shows you the best way to find your first items as a new Amazon seller. What we know is if we can buy this product from an everyday website like this one and sell it profitably, there's going to be other sellers on this listing who are going to be selling items profitably. We can find from different websites, right? So you can start from an item like this. It's also a good idea to start from any brand that doesn't sell on Amazon and is very dominated by sellers who are just buying things from Walmart, Target. So think about like great value brand or anything Target branded, anything retail store branded, right? Or Nike, lots of those big brands that don't sell on Amazon themselves are going to be great starting points for you to start doing what's called reverse sourcing. So I'm just going to be reverse sourcing here. I've not really scripted anything out here. I just want to go live through the process, talk out what I'm seeing as we look through some potential leads here. So we're looking at this body wash listing here. And based on the fact that this is profitable, these sellers are going to be selling other profitable products, right? And so I see this seller right here. They've got about 100 feedback. Typically, I'm looking for 50 to 250 feedback on a listing. So on this listing, looks like we've got a couple storefronts that I'd probably reverse source. Honestly, probably any of these FBA storefronts here, I'd go ahead and look through. Let's just go ahead and look at this particular seller right here. So right off the bat, using seller amp here we can see what brands they're selling we can see what categories they're selling so maybe if you're only ungated in certain brands right now or you're only ungated in certain categories you can just niche down from there and start seeing you know what potential there is for you um, also if you just want to start focusing on a different category tired of the returns and clothing you just want to look at grocery go for it you can just look through the grocery products on this storefront so from here our challenge with reverse sourcing is to figure out if we can buy this item for this max cost option here so in this case the item selling for about 10 bucks we can also see over here on the key a chart that this item is selling for $10. So we can pretty easily rule this product out. And this view is something that's very unique to Selleramp. You're not really going to find any other tools that's going to make it this easy for you to start sourcing products. So definitely go ahead and check out that free trial down below if you want to follow along with the video here. So right away here, we're able to rule that product out because Amazon is selling on the listing. It's too cheap. We're not going to be able to buy that for two bucks. It looks like we might have a similar issue here where it seems like it used to be fairly expensive. You can see third-party sellers used to be on this for 40 bucks or so. And then Amazon came on the listing. That is totally fine. So let's 
just keep on heading on here. So we got a barbecue rub, 12 ounce. We'd have to buy it for about $6 and 60 cents. And that seems maybe that is possible. Just some spices, right? So just hit that Google button there and it'll automatically search the title of the item for you. Then we're just going to go ahead and poke around here. So this is the actual website. Looks like they sell it for $12. Sometimes it's good to check like Capital One Shopping or something like that has some coupon codes listed. So a lot of times I'll just go in here and do add 10 to cart, check out, and then we can quickly see if we can get any of these discount codes to apply. So let's go ahead and run that extension. And so there we go. It looks like we were able to find a code that seems like it's probably like 15% off or so, but that listing we were looking at originally, we'd have to buy it for about six bucks. So it wasn't quite cheap enough. Maybe we can poke around and see if there's some other potential sources. It seems like that price might be a little bit higher than where you'd be able to source unless you find a good deal on it. This to me looks like something I would start tracking down like a distributor for something like that if you want to go even higher level. But let's just go ahead and keep heading down the line here. So Amazon sells it. Amazon sells it. Pretty easy to skip those two. So here we got like a ceramic hair straightener. So let's check that out. Basically, we need to buy this item for about 15 bucks. And let's go ahead and see what the prices are looking like. So it looks like Target could potentially have it for 15. That's DH Gate. If you guys ever see like DH Gate, Alibaba, that kind of stuff, never buy products for arbitrage from those sites. They're pretty much always going to be fake products. Would lead to some pretty bad customer complaints. So here's that product over at Target. Let's see. Is that the same product? So it is like comb. I want to go ahead and open up this listing here and get a closer look at it. So it looks like there's the gold listing. Oh, so there's ceramic gold and there's also gold, which is interesting. Seems like the price has been dropping a little bit recently. So this is actually a red flag. It's a good you know, teaching moment here. So on this listing, you see how the buy box line has gone away. And on this listing, there's no more button that says add to cart. If you guys shop on Amazon, you probably just hit that add to cart button every time you buy an item. In this case, the buy box has gone away. And typically what happens after the buy box goes away is the item is going to start selling slower. And then the item is also going to decrease in price because simple supply and demand, the item starts selling slower. People have the same amount of supply and they need to lower the price to find that new equilibrium. So we can see even recently the price has been dropping down to 23 bucks. So that's a big red flag to me, especially since it always had a buy box in the past and now it's just suddenly gone. This item is probably going to continue heading to being tanked. It seems like it was a pretty decent item there for a while, but let's go ahead and keep heading on here. So this guy right here, this ointment of some kind, we'd have to buy it for 450. It seems like a more luxury brand. So I'd be pretty surprised. Yeah, there it is for 13, 20 off of 100. That's not quite going to cut it. So let's go ahead and keep going down here. So Funko, some kind of custom Funko pop. We could buy it for 17 bucks. So that could be realistic. Not really sure. So let's go ahead and check it out. So Funko. Seems like it might be out of stock. Go ahead and throw that on here. So it was on final sale. So it was probably a limited edition type thing. Probably not gonna be able to find that one profitably. So we got this Clinique product. We'd have to buy it for $9. And this is another thing you guys should look out for as you're doing this sourcing method. Anytime you see these prices rapidly decreasing like that, typically that means that the item has tanked. When originally you would have bought it for, seems like it was selling for 35 bucks or so. So you probably buy it for 16, 17 bucks and then theoretically make 40, 50% ROI. But a lot of people, too many people hopped on this item. You can see the price continue to decrease there. And so anytime you see a Keepa pattern where the new FBA price, that orange line there has continually decreased and stayed at the bottom, it's usually going to mean that that item is going to be very difficult to find profitably. Even in this case, I should have seen that pattern. And this sourcing method is all about learning how to look past bad products as fast as possible. Good products are very obvious. You compare the prices A to B and it looks great, right? You're going to see way more bad products. So start learning as many little tricks like that helps you avoid opening up the, the Google, opening up Amazon on each one of these products. That's going to save you a ton of time. So let's go ahead and check these out here. So it's got some roller derby skates sold by Amazon. So we can't hop on those. This one seems a little bit more interesting. We can see the price is even increasing a little bit recently. Seems like we could have something on our hands here. So let's go ahead and check this one out real quick. Seems like it's going for eight bucks over there. And then, yeah, so recently the price has been at about $10 and it recently lost buy box. So another one of those examples where we can keep on going here. So Yankee candle price is way lower than it was in the past. So I'm just going to do a quick check on something like this. Actually, those are five bucks. Is that the same? So you got like a white, blue, red. It's probably like a fourth of July type product, something like that. So decent seasonality for the time we're looking at it. So let's see. So there's the listing. Okay. So that's them right there. So this would be something you could throw a restock tracker on if you have one of those. A lot of times websites like this will have an option for you to throw in your email and it will tell you when the, the items back in stock. Doesn't seem like this one does, but if you ever find something like that, most websites have that actually where you can throw it in there and get an email. And then often you'll start having profitable products just pop up in your email inbox. And those are awesome because those are the limited supply 
buy type products. So let's see. So this guy right here seems like it's been consistently selling for about 15 bucks. We'd have to buy it very cheap. So at this point, I would probably start finding a different storefront. And that's part of this method as well as seeing a lot of the products that this seller is selling has been price tanked and that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll scroll through here and check for some things that seem a little bit more interesting. Like this one, the price just hasn't dropped too bad on it. We'd have to buy it for eight bucks. Let's see. So yeah, so they got it. It's their own website for 12. We could see if they have, again, any kind of coupon popping up here. So if we had 30%, would that be enough? 30% off 12, we need it to every eight bucks. So it'd be close, but not quite. So probably just keep moving on here. This one, the price has been decreasing pretty rapidly. I'd be pretty surprised if you're able to get that one profitably. This one seems a little bit interesting. So this almond or yeah, pecan crunch there. Price is pretty consistent. Let's go ahead and check that one out. Let's see. So almond pecan crunch one count. That could be something potentially there. So we're looking at a 20 ounce. And then over here, we got this listing here. This is just a five ounce bag. So a little bit too small there. So there's the Sam's Club listing. I would imagine this is probably where people are buying it from. So yeah, if, if we need to buy it for 780, I might just open up the listing here. Sometimes it's good to see if there's a more consistent higher price that the item sells for. So it looks like it usually goes for about 20 bucks. I'm just plug in that average cost there. I guess we're paying 10 bucks for it. We would make a little bit of money. It's grocery, so it's probably not going to be returnable, but that's a little bit too thin for me. You'd have to have some serious wiggle room there. Yeah, so at this point, I'll probably go ahead and pick out a different storefront. I like to check through maybe 10, 15 different products on a storefront, and then I'll head on to a different one here. So yeah, let's go ahead and check out this. Uh, they're brand new. See if they're onto anything here. So they got some Alka Seltzer stuff here. Seems like the price is way higher than it was in the past. So maybe they are onto something here. Some for 26 bucks. Seems like it could be a limited thing. Maybe it's really popular with the seasonality. So they're selling for 26 bucks. We need to buy it for 12 or so. CVS has it for 12, theoretically. Walgreens has it listed, but I think it said they were out of stock. You can also often open up like the brand website and it'll say like where to buy. And then, yeah, based on this, we'll probably be able to find some stores that it lists. So it's just listing like actual retail storefronts. A lot of times it'll say like where you can buy it online. So add to retailer's cart. Interesting. I don't know if I've seen this as layout before. Okay, there we go. So Walmart, Amazon, Walgreens, and Target is our options here. So here it is on Walgreens. It seems like this one's out of stock. This one's also eligible for a coupon. So I would definitely throw this on something that kind of tracks the restock status of it. So we got this guy. And this is shipping for $12.49 here. CVS is, I haven't run too many coupons in it much like that before. That would be insane if that applies, but almost no way that the 50% that code is going to work on kind of a medicine product here. But yeah, if we're buying this for $12.49 there, so that's $5 profit each. It's been selling at this higher price for a little bit. It's not really the price it belongs at though. So like really big picture, it's more like a $20 item, I'd say, or even like a $19 item. Yeah, so your upside here is making, let's see, you're making about a 45% ROI. Your downside is a 0% ROI. So I don't really see you losing money on something like this. If you have plenty of capital, maybe you could pull the trigger on something like that. It's not a home run product. I might buy it just to see if the price stays high and if it goes back down to 0% ROI, that's okay. We'll, we'll get our money back out and, and buy something better with it. If you guys are super capital limited, then I probably wouldn't recommend that. Let's go ahead and keep on checking out a couple more products. So we found that, pull the trigger on a little bit of that. Let's see if we can find a bigger winner here and then we'll go ahead and kind of call it there. So United Pet, so this is interesting because it's really cheap. So I'll show you guys a trick within Salaramp. You do have the ability to do the small mite calculator. So when we do that, you can see the fees change like pretty drastically. They go from three bucks up to $4.10. So it makes us basically an extra dollar if we're able to find this profitably. So let's figure out what we're looking at here. So we got these kind of, what are these? This like eye drops or something? Multi drops? I would imagine it's, it's probably a vitamin or something like that. Eye drops for birds. <laughs> yeah, let's check this out here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the Google button again. So that Walmart's probably a third party seller if it's like a weird high price. That could be that from Walmart right there. So 278 is what we're buying it for over here. So yeah, you can make 47% ROI. Doesn't make a lot of sense unless you've got like some in-house prep help. Also thinking about the longer term averages here, you'd almost double your money on some of this stuff. So yeah, another more borderline product. Definitely not a home run by any means, but you could definitely make some money. And I would say only pull the trigger on items like that if you're not spending your own time putting stickers on things and prepping items. And I just don't want you to be working for whatever putting stickers on a dollar a unit profit items are. You can probably hire someone that makes sense to list those types of products. So yeah, let's check out a few more products here. So this, what do we got? So it's like a soap of some kind. Yeah. So that's part of the game here as well as you'll learn a ton of random products that you never thought you'd know anything about. So 
Yeah, so it seems like, is this like the new version of a mothball or something like that? So they're selling for $3.77 a pop. We need a three pack for 10 bucks. So this actually could be another profitable item here. So we got six ounces over here. Just want to make sure everything's the same. Lavender scented. Always good to zoom in and make sure everything looks the exact same. It seems like the same to me. So six ounces. But yeah, so now let's see. So we're paying $3.77 unit. So you can do $3.77 and then you can do your math in seller ramp here. It helps you be a little faster there. So we're paying $11.31 for this all said and done. I want to go ahead and check it at the average price. I'll go ahead and check it at the 30 day average. So 30 day average, we're not making a ton of money. It was like a maybe a temporary seller increase. Hard to know if that seller increase would come back. If it did come all the way back, what's our profit? We're breaking even. If the price stays where it's at up here at 24 ish, we're making a decent ROI, not home run by any means. I also don't see this product being returned super often people pretty much know what they're getting with this. So I wouldn't be as concerned with that as say like an apparel product, you don't wanna buy apparel that's 30% ROI. It's pretty much always gonna to lead to too many returns and lose your profit and that kind of stuff. I like to, you know, buy those products that are a little bit lower ROI in lower return categories. Yeah, so I would probably pull the trigger on something like this. I wouldn't be surprised if you end up a little bit less profitable than you think, but there's also a good chance you can end up more profitable than you think because there's decent history of this item selling at 26 bucks and above in the past. And those I'm all over that. If you're making about five bucks profit, you're making over 40% ROI. And that's a pretty, very solid product there. And yeah, so based on kind of the seller trends here, so this is selling like 261 times a month. I also want to get a sense of kind of our competition here. So we've got eight competitive sellers who are all at that 23.95 price. So you'd be that ninth competitive seller in theory, if all all those numbers are correct and everything you know goes to plan then you would probably be making about 30 sales 30 to 40 sales a month dividing that 260 by the, the night you being the ninth seller in this case another thing i want to check on listings like this before you pull the trigger is go data and then buy box statistics on keepa and then this is perfect i typically just want to see a lot of more equal percentages this is basically showing you the percentage of sales that each seller has made on this listing and i'm seeing lots of sellers even if they don't have a ton of feedback making you know decent sales you can also feel to this by last one so you can see like how active the buy box is and rotating and so even just here in the last 24 hours we've had four sellers there make sales on this product so it definitely seems like this product is something you'd be able to make sales on sales would rotate to you pretty much no problem shop on this listing listed at 23.95 set your repricer up i'd probably end up buying 40 units of this you'd buy 120 of those bars of mothballs over from walmart.com and then should just go ahead and ship this product in off to amazon they'll take care of the order fulfillment they'll do any customer service on those listings pretty much all you have to do is take care of any potential customer returns, that kind of stuff, which isn't super frequent. And a lot of that is taken care of by Amazon as well. So that's how the bare basics of reverse sourcing works. So far, we've done a very basic version of reverse sourcing, where we're simply trying to find anything that sells. But often the best place to use this skill is when you already know a great sale or website that you can find super cheap inventory. So in this example, I found an awesome sale that was going on Puma shoes and clothing. And I'm going to show you the best way to source through amazing sales on things like Puma, Lego, Nike, Neutrogena, any big name brands that you see on sale. So one of the biggest things that you want to remember as you're trying to find your first products to sell on Amazon is that almost none of them will be good if you're buying them at retail price. You need to buy them at wholesale. You need to buy them with really good coupons. And so when I have this in mind, I'm looking at these Puma sneakers. I know that Puma sneakers are potentially on a really good sale today. And so I want to go ahead and dig deeper down the rabbit hole. The problem with this arises when we go ahead and search, I searched for Puma shoes right here. There is a lot of shoes here. We have no idea what's going to be good, what might be profitable, which of these are even selling. And what we want to do to take this a step further is go ahead and start seeing what the sellers on these listings are actually selling. So for example, on seller ramp down here, I want to go ahead and open up one of these seller storefronts that have not too many feedback. The reason for that is this guy who has 8,000 feedback is probably a very seasoned Amazon seller. They might have some wholesale connections. They might be doing some way things in ways that we don't really understand as new Amazon sellers. So I want to go all the way back to the basics as much as possible for you guys. So this storefront right here, they have 151 feedback. So this storefront has definitely done six figures in revenue, maybe even seven figures with that money feedback, but they're definitely still going to be buying items from these websites. So we might be able to reverse engineer where they're getting it from. And if you're familiar with the channel, you've probably seen this method before. This is called reverse sourcing. But the reason why this is so powerful today, when we have a sale on a brand that we already know could be very cheap, all we need to do is look through the storefronts of other Amazon sellers who are already selling Puma. I can get way more specific and only source their Puma products here. And so based on the fact that these Amazon sellers are selling, these Puma products are also on sale.
sale, it helps us cheat the curve a little bit and maybe find products even faster, right? So once I'm into this storefront view here, what I'm trying to determine is if this max cost option is a reasonable price for me to pay for this item. As a brand new seller, you're going to have no idea what the answer to that question is. And so you're going to want to click the Google button here, and then that's going to populate the search results and help you potentially find this product, right? So right here, we've got the Puma listing right there. Looks like it is $50. We can get another 25% off. But when we check out the Keep It Down here, it looks like we have a max cost of about $26. So where this gets a little bit more interesting is when we open up the Amazon listing. And this is where we're going to start using that other tool I was talking about. It's called Keepa. So just because this one particular size is about $51, we are not able to sell this profitably. I think we're buying these for about 38 bucks after that coupon. There's a good shot that we might be able to find a different variation that's selling at a price that's profitable. So what I want to go ahead and check out is see, first of all, do we have any other colors? In this case, we've only got that pink color right there. So I'm going to go ahead and use our other tool, Keepa, which is going to allow me to check out the variations down here. And then I'm going to go ahead and press pink in here because I noticed that pink was in the title there. I might even make that a little bit more specific so we can go pink dash and then that's going to get us to pink aquamarine, which is the ones we're actually looking at. So when I get here, now I'm interested in checking out the buy box price. So this is showing me the price over time of an item like this. So it looks like recently the price of this item has been about $55. If this is selling for 55 bucks, we're only making a dollar a unit selling this product. So we don't really want to dig any deeper on something like that. Comparing that to let's see items like this looks like pretty recently it's selling for 85 bucks. So I want to open this back up and see if it could potentially come back up in pricing. See this one is selling for $65 recently. And I hope you can see that right there on the buy box price line. That's just showing me basically the price over time on the item, right? So this one was at 85. And what's interesting is these actually have a very good amount of reviews. When you're typically looking at products on Amazon, I don't remember the last time I left a review on Amazon. You probably don't remember the last time you left a review for a product on Amazon. So these are pretty rare. And so to see this many ratings count increases on these items shows me that this item is very popular and actually sells pretty well. So that's the first thing I'm looking for on these products. The other side of the coin is obviously making sure that the product is going to sell. Just opening up any of these that have gone up to a range that might be profitable for me recently and then we can take a further look right so what's interesting is this one is currently pulling a buy box at 80 bucks which i guess literally just happened it hasn't been being charted so it looks like last time this happened was back in october it seems like pretty consistently the price is around 53 bucks which isn't going to cut it since we're paying 38 let's check out something like this so this one very recently was selling for 85 dollars. we can check out the year-long view on something like this and it seems like very recently dropped down to about 51 dollars. if it was selling in the 85 dollar range though we'd be making about 25 dollars profit per unit and so this is the type of item that i really like to store and remember for later, right? So I'm going to throw this on a list called Christmas. I also would recommend making some different Google Sheets in your seller app, like close to profit, all that kind of stuff. So you can just start remembering some of these leads. And so basically I put this on my Christmas list because there's a good shot that Christmas demand might make the price rise back up. At this very moment though, I'm definitely not interested in buying this item given that it's selling for 55 bucks and we basically make nothing selling this product. Let's go ahead and check out this other one here. It seems like pretty recently this product's been selling for about $50, but again, we're not super interested in that. So that's the process as we're looking through these items, right? I want to figure out which of these products do I actually have? In this case, we had these pretty fast selling pinkish black shoes here. And then we need to see are any of those profitable. So in this case, we found one that might be profitable before too long, but I definitely want to go ahead and keep moving on down the list here. So let's go ahead and open up these. And I'm going to go ahead and move a little bit faster just so you guys can see my actual live sourcing process here. And we're going to see if we can find some winners. So check out these right here. Seems like this is showing me at just a bird's eye view that the highest price, at least that has a buy box, is about $45. So unless we have a really killer deal on Puma, we might just go ahead and skip these right away. I want to say it seems like that says it's going to be about $34 with our code there. We do have all of them in stock. So we can go ahead and see if there's any like random, more expensive sizes that we could check out. And then see, in this case, we've got this one right here selling for 70. We are buying these for 45 plus a 25% code, I believe. Yeah, 25% off. We can go in here and do 45 times 0.75. That's going to give us basically our math. And then if we are selling these for 70 bucks, that is actually going to be profitable. And so I want to look more into something like this. So we can open up that one. Those are 70 bucks. And these also have a pretty good amount of rate ratings, which shows me that this product does actually sell just because it's if over 600 ratings have been left for this shoe, pretty reasonable to expect that it is actually selling. I also want to check out this one going for 65. That's still going to be $12 profit if it is looking good for us. So the next thing we need to look at is the colors. I noticed that this one's all black, but this one does seem to be the same color there, right? So when we check out this item, the other piece that we need to worry about is Amazon being on the listing. In this case, if you are looking at an item, you need to make sure that you're going to be able to win the buy box on the item. That's basically just deciding who wins sales on the item. So in this case, 
space. Amazon has 100% of the buy box. You can also see that on Keepa when that orange bar is up on the top showing that Amazon doesn't really share sales with third party sellers. And again, we have a very similar case going on there. Let's see if they share on this one. Amazon does not actually sell on this variation right here. So this could be worth checking out. So we got again, we got 45 times 0.75. So we're paying 33 bucks about for this product. We can see that the number of new sellers is moving all over the place. We can see up on the top there that the buy box is rotating nicely. You can see several different sellers making sales. See this guy just now made a sale at 65 bucks. Four hours ago, they made a sale at about $64 as well. So if you're plugging all that in, even down to 64, it's not exactly the ROI that I like to look for, but we are still making $11.45 profit. So this right away is probably one of our first winners that we would go ahead and source for the day. And so we can just go ahead and add this to our list. We'd go ahead and buy this product. You're going to want to ship this product to you, or you can also ship it to a prep center who's going to receive the inventory for you. That's what I like to do. If you're a brand new seller, you should probably ship it to you. If you're watching this video at the time of being uploaded, you should be buying these products and shipping them directly to you so that you can merchant fulfill these products. Basically just letting you take advantage of the fact that customers want to buy this product literally today and you can list it, ship it directly to the customer and start making some profit. So I made a full guide to FBM sales on the channel. I've also got full guides on making your own shipments and all that kind of stuff. If you are curious on how that process works, let's go ahead and keep rolling on here. Now that we've found one winning product, let's go ahead and see if we can find any other winners. So we've got these repeat sneakers. I'm just going to hit the Google button again. So we've got the Puma listing right there. We've got another Puma listing there. And then it seems like there might be some different potential for like different prices, that kind of thing, which could be interesting to look at. So those are slightly different color. I want to see. So the all whites right there, some of the most expensive on the listing are 47 bucks. So if we're trying to sell these for 47 bucks and they're like $40 on the website, there might not be too much margin left over. And so we can just do a super quick skim here. And when we're skimming for these prices right here, I also really like to go ahead and just check for the items that have actual ratings versus these that have zero ratings. So let's see the 12 wides right here. They have a little bit of ratings actually. It's that weird kind of black and white that we saw there for a second. I don't see any differences between the wides and you know the standard size shoe. So we can go and skip that. Looks like this one also has a history of selling for $55 recently. And that's probably just not going to cut it. Here's some more of these though that we can check out. So 65 bucks has a history of selling for 40 recently. So when I'm looking at these products, I really like to make sure that I am consistently making profit. But let me just pop open this as a decent example. So we can buy these for 35 bucks. Plus we got that discount 35 times 0.75. So today we are basically doubling our money if we buy these shoes right here. The reason why I think these are a little bit on the risky side is because if we go down here to the 90 day average price and click it right there, our profit significantly lowers, but we actually are still in the money. I want to go and check out the 30 day there. And yeah, so maybe this is actually not as bad as it looks like at first glance. I saw a lot of these prices down at like 41 bucks recently, though, this price has been as high as $71 and we can see lots of sellers coming in and off this listing, which again shows me that this product does actually sell new people want to come and sell this product. Old sellers are coming and hopping off this listing as they make some sales. So this could be another winning product right there. So buying it for 26, we can sell it for $70 at the moment. On average, we're selling it for 60 bucks. It seems like what's our worst case selling for 41. It's always a good idea to figure out like what your worst case scenario is. So our best case scenario is we are basically making a double up on our money. Our worst case scenario is that we are making no money and probably lose like a dollar or two after we consider shipping and our time and all that kind of stuff of getting this into Amazon. That could be another potential winner there. As we go ahead and scroll down through these other variations here, we'd want to go ahead and see if there is anything else like that. So 65 bucks could be another winner. These size tens right there and so on. So these 58, these are marked at like 58 bucks. So if these are 58, we were buying them for 35 times 0.75. We're buying these for 26. I'm decently interested in these. The problem with this though, is there's no like recent gain in the amount of ratings that they've had. And so it's not quite as assuring that this product is actually selling, but could still be worth taking a little bit of a shot on it. Buy five or 10 pairs, see how it goes. And that's the power of merchant fulfillment, right? So if you buy this item, it shows up on your doorstep, you can list it, and then you can potentially be making sales the same day just to validate that this product does actually sell for your Amazon store. That's a couple other potential leads we could look into there. I want to go ahead and keep on trucking here. And so I hope you can see the power of just looking through the items that other Amazon sellers are already selling, but not just looking at the only sizes that they're selling or only the products themselves that they're selling, but using it as a launching point for other colors and other types of items. So if you like to do groceries and vitamins and that kind of stuff, you can source the same brands that you might be finding on sale, but check the different types of vitamins. Same goes for grocery category when you're looking for like multi packs and all that kind of stuff instead of just like the single packs. There's a lot of potential in doing this method here. So once again, we're just going to go ahead and just based on the fact that they're selling this Puma Astro kick right here, we can click the Google button and then we can see if we can find it. So it seems like they might have it on the Puma site and check these out. So these are selling for 64 bucks right now. I'm over here on the Puma site. Looks like some of the smaller sizes might be out of stock. See the, the black and whites there. So a lot of the bigger sizes. So it looks like everything from 10 up is in stock, which is interesting. So these are the tens right here. This may be immediately a problem 
profitable product, which is cool to see. The 35 bucks, oh, it's 35 times 0.75. We're buying these for about 26 bucks again. In the past, they do have a history of going for $44. So worst case, we're making $2.61. Currently today, we're making $20 for spending 26 bucks, which is not too bad at all. And then the other component I want to consider, especially sourcing this time of year, is seasonality. And so when I look at this Keepa chart right here, this is showing me that last December, literally no one was in stock. We can see down here on the new offer count that there was genuinely no one. And so either the Q4 demand was just too high and everyone sold out. Either way, the price was super, super high, right? It was up at 62 bucks and then it went to three bucks. And even then they sold out selling this item for 83 bucks. So that's a really good sign if people were willing to pay $83 for an item that we only have to pay about 26 bucks for. So I want to make sure again that these are the exact same items. That's the other big thing you want to look out for. So Puma Gold, there is actually that gold little stripe up there. So let's see, 81s. Actually, these could be a little bit different, huh? So white stripe. Actually, those are the same. Yeah, similar like pattern in the front, white tongue, or I guess that's a black tongue, huh? Okay, so they're slightly different depending on the Amazon seller. Some people would sell it, some people wouldn't. You really just want to make sure that you'd be happy receiving the product that you are sourcing here. So this could be a different one right there. So these black, uh, those all blacks right there, what we're looking for. So even these are decent, right? So these are the eight and a half. So let's go ahead and go to variations here and then filter down to what we actually have. So I'm just going to copy that color and I'm going to go down here and then paste. It seems like it probably grabbed some weird text or something. So we can do black, white. There we go. And then once we get in here, I always like to filter by buy box price. So just showing me the most expensive items. So 68 bucks for these guys right here. I'm um, not a lot of actions on these ratings charts. So maybe they're not selling the fastest anymore, but I want to go ahead and pop these open and just see how realistic they might be to make some profit on these. I'm just going to check like these top three here. So 68 bucks very recently was going for 52. So if these are selling for 52 bucks, we're buying them for, I think it was 27 bucks. We are still interested in that. Actually, we do make $10 every time that sells. And a way that I like to validate that if we actually want to sell this, you can click the keep offers tab and you might catch somebody kind of slacking where they're revealing how fast that their items sell. So something like this, they're probably like hiding stock at two in, in stock. And then they did actually make some sales on something like this. So it does prove that people do want to buy these. Definitely not the fastest seller in the world. Again, maybe five or 10 units, something like that. I'm not as good as some of those other items we've found for sure. So these nine and a halfs, I think we said that the tens might be all we have. Yeah. Okay. So those nines were out of stock anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So the thirteens, however, we do have in stock. It seems like a decent history of some new sellers going away, which is always good to see. Last Christmas, there's really not much history at all. Hard to tell if this item sold at all last Christmas. Again, the sales rank is very solid on this item though. We're buying these for 27. We can sell them, make 10 bucks profit every time. This would be the type of item that's literally in stock right now. I'd probably buy five to 10 units of just to test the waters there. I mean, you can definitely just keep ripping through all these different colors as well. So instead of just focusing on the black, white, all that kind of stuff, let's go ahead and filter by the potential fastest sellers. So here we've got like the white tongue. I don't think we had the white tongue in stock, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I am curious to see if we have any of the other ones that we were looking at in stock here. So I think those are the 13s we were looking at. Here's some green ones. They are up at, they've been at like 40 bucks. They're not the highest price in the world. Um, I will check those out. Did we have the green ones on there? It does look like we had the green ones. So we can go ahead and check those out. Let's see here. So there's some green ones right there. 50 bucks. Those would be profitable, I believe. 40 bucks. Let's see another $50 item right there. This one actually is increasing in ratings recently, which shows me that this product actually probably does sell. So let's pop some of these open. So 49 bucks. Buy these for 27. So profit's a little bit low on something like this. What I would recommend this kind of this is a gem for you guys watching this late into the video. Check sites like Raise to see if you can buy discounted gift cards. So I think Puma might be out of stock in terms of discounted gift cards go today. But you can check Raise. You can check Card Bear. There's lots of other websites where you can buy discounted gift cards where you might be able to make the slight difference where if let's say you save 10% on a discounted gift card there, you end up paying 25 bucks, you're way, way closer to that 35% ROI I like to look for. But in this case, just since it is a slower selling item, I don't typically want to take the risk at something like at my cutoff point. So let's see, these are 51 bucks right now. Again, we're buying for 27. So really close to the cutoff point. Last December though, you can see how fast that this was selling during the holiday rush. So I would be shocked if we didn't see a similar pattern. The price even went as high as like 72 bucks. So personally, I'm for fortunate enough to have been doing this for a long time to build up the amount of capital I need to take risky buys like this. So if you had a good amount of capital, you could take a gamble on something like this. I don't typically like taking gambles on products that I'm not super, super confident in today. Although you are making eight bucks, 70 cents. It's a good way to test the waters. And it definitely is selling based on the, the movement in new sellers there. You can see when the prices are changing, new sellers are getting kicked off, new guys are getting added back on. I and mean, that's just showing me that they're probably going out of stock on something like this. So again, up here at 50 bucks, that is pretty interesting. But the other thing you want to think about as you're looking through 
through these sales is that you can leverage things like Rakuten. Rakuten, I noticed on Puma today is 10% cash back. I don't typically like to include that into my margin just because it's not going to pay out 100% of the time, but it is some very nice bonus money. So if you're buying something that's already at your cutoff point, so especially the ones that were going 52 bucks, 51 bucks, that kind of thing, having that extra 10% cash back is just a nice way to add some bonus money to your business, kind of make a very close buy into a genuinely good buy. So I want to go ahead and show you one other trick here that you're going to be able to use to find more profitable products. And so we ended up on a rabbit hole here, right? So we ended up on this Astro Kick that took us to this where we found a couple profitable ASINs, but we now we found this entirely new listing that didn't have anything under this. So what I'm going to do here is this is called manual sourcing. So you're just jumping straight into a product listing, trying to see if that product sells on Amazon. So it's playing the guesswork game a lot more. And that's how I do a lot of my personal sourcing. Now that I've been doing this for quite a while, you're going to be able to get a feel for what sells well and what doesn't sell well on Amazon by reverse sourcing, just looking at the products that you know are already good. Once you've done this for quite a while, you're going to have kind of a sourcing muscle developed where you can go in and just directly into the websites, look at the items that you think might be doing pretty well. And so when I click the seller app extension here, it's going to grab that title automatically, put it over here, and then it's going to search basically Amazon's results to see if I can find that product. And so something that interesting that I can see here that kind of saves me a lot of time is the fact that this item is a 1 million sales rank. It's 1.7 million sales rank. Basically, I like to try to stay under 150 K ideally hundred K BSR. That's like the top 100,000 selling products, which is awesome that the top 100,000 is even something worth considering it really shows you how many potential products there are out there for you. But on something like this, since we are looking at a 1.7 million sales rank on these SL sneakers, the pictures look very similar, especially to this white one right there, but you probably don't even have to open up this listing. And so this saves me a bunch of time as I'm looking through a lot of these listings. Again, you can do the same thing on something like this. It'll grab the title, throw it into an Amazon search result. And so you can see like something like this 5k BSR. We already looked at it. A lot of Amazon on the listing, that kind of thing, but it's obviously way better looking listing than this that has a 1.7 million sales rank compared to this as a 5k BSR, which is really fast selling in the shoes category. So now that you know two different ways to source products, I want to break down exactly what you're looking for every time you buy an item. In this next section of the free course, we're going to go step by step everything that I check before I pull the trigger and buy an item. Keeping these things in mind will save you thousands of dollars. And if you want a PDF version of this checklist I'm about to run through, I'll drop it down below. It's in the Amazon launch pad. That checklist is completely free and it breaks down a lot of the things we're going to talk about. So let's get into the checklist and start taking notes. So let's go ahead and dive into this example here. The first thing you need to look at pretty much any Amazon listing is the price, right? So just for the sake of example, let's say we source this item for $50. It seems like at first glance, you're going to be super profitable here. You'd be making $26 in profit. But the first thing you guys need to check out for is the consistency in the price, right? So right now it is profitable. Although when we check out the keep a chart down here, this is going to show you a lot about how consistent that price is on the item, right? And a lot of new beginners, they'll come, they'll buy items, they'll complain about how the prices are tanking or their prices are a lot lower than when they bought the item, right? And a lot of times it boils down to not knowing what to look at in these keeper charts right here. So right here, we have a super classic example of an item that is way more expensive than it should be. You can see literally a couple hours ago, the price shot way up to a hundred bucks. A new seller might source this listing. Somebody who doesn't really know what to look out for might check out this listing and say, hey, I can buy this item that looks good to me. But in reality, when we go ahead and check out this chart, we can see very consistently this item's been going for about $47, right? The other thing that's going to be valuable to check down here is going to seller and click 90 day average. And then you can just go ahead and click that. It's going to change your default sales price up there. And so we can see, although right now we're making $26 on the 90 day average, we're going to be losing about 38% profit, $18 per unit. And that's not exactly the business we want to be in, right? So I want to show you on the flip side of that. Let's say you're sourcing this Nike slide right here, right? Going into Christmas could be a pretty giftable item, that kind of thing. And right now selling for $42, we can buy them for 18. We're going to make about $9.50 profit per unit. And when we go ahead and check out the keeper chart down here, we can see that this price, although $42, isn't necessarily where it usually belongs. You can see usually it's like 42 there. Back in the past year, it's been about $35. I'm also going to simplify that right there. So you can see the buy box price line, usually about 35, 37 bucks. So we'd want to see what's my worst case scenario. That's something I like to ask myself anytime I buy a product is what is my worst case scenario, right? If you've ever done like stock trading or anything like that, it's just like risk reward analysis, basically. So on this, if 35 bucks is my worst case scenario, it seems like I'm still making $3.50 profit. We can also zoom out to the past year. It's going to be really interesting, especially for those of you guys who are sourcing products for Christmas coming up. If you're watching this video right after it came out, you can see again, this is very giftable type item, right? So even though the price has been at 35 bucks, maybe we're making 20% ROI. Last Christmas, everybody sold out. The price shot way up. This year, there's way less sellers on the listing and the price is staying up in our range where we're pretty profitable, right? So when we go down here, doing the same thing, we can do our 90 day average price. Go ahead and click that there. And we're actually very profitable at that 90 day average. And that's something that I like to check, right? So a specific data point that I look to look for here is if I'm at least a 25 to 30 percent ROI 
buy at my 90 day average buy box, I like to pull the trigger on those types of items. I don't always have to see that on every single one of my listings, but that just shows me that the profit is going to be a little bit more consistent than a listing like this one, especially this one is a very drastic example of where the price was way higher on that 90 day average. We're just not making any money. So the first thing you check on every single listing is my price reasonable. And am I going to consistently be able to make sales at this price? By the way, I'll go ahead and show you a quick keep a gem here as well. If you go to the data offers tab, we can go ahead and include historical. And if you ever are like, man, are people really paying 50 bucks or hundred bucks for this crazy item that you just found right on this, we can see the exact price these sellers had it for and their stock count over time. So we can see right here on November 3rd, this seller had it priced at $42. And on November 3rd, it looks like their stock was steadily decreasing. So that shows me provably right here on the keep a chart that this item does genuinely sell for that $42 price point. And so if you want to come in here, sell it for $42, you get that nice assurance that you actually can sell it for that. The next thing you need to check when you're looking into profitable items to sell is if it sells fast enough for you, right? So I pull up this example of a product here. Again, what we we're just talking about, we see a lot of consistency in the pricing there. It's anywhere from 19 to $22, depending on what you're sourcing it for. For the sake of example, let's say you're buying this for four bucks. I would assume that'd be a really good item in here. And another thing that we love to see is that this item is selling over 3000 times a month, right? And the reason why I pull up an example like this is because I'm actually going to break the rules on my profitability metrics sometimes, right? So I'm usually going to be looking for about 35% ROI or about $3 profit per unit. But if we have insane volume, or if it's in a category like grocery where they can't return it, so I might even be interested in buying this product all the way down to 25% ROI or so, right? So another seller who's going to be really strict, they might only buy it for five bucks, four bucks, whatever it is. We could go in here and maybe we buy this for 650, that kind of thing. We're only making $2 a bag. Hopefully this would be like with your prep costs and everything baked in. But since it's super high volume, we have way less time in between each sale for the price to go down, right? That's something that I really want you guys to remember is the more sales you have, the less risk in between each sale that you're going to make there is for the price to go down. So this super high volume listing, we're okay with less ROI because there's less time in between each sale. Worst case, if the price starts trending down, we can just liquidate our stock, make 20% ROI, 15% ROI, whatever's left on the listing. And in a grocery category, we'd be willing to go even lower than that. Comparing this to a different item, although this is still grocery, no returns, that kind of thing, we wouldn't have to worry about it. When we check out this item, you can see a lot more time is in between each sale, right? It seems like maybe recently the sales are starting to pick up and that $10 price point's a little bit more reinforced. But back here in the past, you can see there was a ton of time in between each sale. When we check out the Keepa chart right here, it's not always the end all be all, but especially on slow selling listings like this, these drops are usually just one sale on this listing, right? So if these sales are this slow, it's no wonder that the price had so much time for it to drop from 10 bucks all the way down to seven bucks. And on a listing where that's hundred bucks down to 70 bucks, that's a very significant financial change for your business. And so you can see in the past of this item, there's been a ton of just random fluctuations in the price of this item because there's so much time in between each sale. The listing is having a hard time finding kind of the price that customers want to pay. And then sellers have no choice but to move their prices all over the place and hopefully make sales where they're still profitable. So what I want you to remember while you're sourcing products is that it should be a sliding scale between volume to profit. So this over here, I'm super, super happy selling this for 20%, 25% ROI, that kind of thing. The price is really not going to go anywhere. We can sell this 3000 times a month, that kind of thing. Comparing that to this listing, there's way more time in between each sale. I'd want to be looking for at least a 60, 70% ROI. And the closer I get to about 30 sales per month is usually my cutoff. This is even below my usual cutoff. I'm usually looking for that 30 sales per month as my minimum cutoff. And, and if I am close to 30 sales per month, I'm usually going to look for that 60, 70% ROI, right? So it's a sliding scale. You need to have more reward to take the risk of letting the price go down, basically. So the next thing I want to talk about here is the impact that competition can have on your listings, right? So I get asked all the time, how many sellers is too many on a listing? How many sellers should I be competing with? And we're going to jump into that on this listing here. So a lot of people ask me, how many sellers is too many to compete with? To me, that is the wrong question. It's about the trend of sellers. And I want to give you a really good example as to what that means, right? So on this, Nike slide listing right here, we can see a couple things. Number one, the sales rank is shooting up, which kind of makes sense. It's a, a, a flip flop kind of product. Maybe you're going to be getting it as a Christmas gift. We saw that on this last slide listing over here, but it seems as summer has started to end, that sales rank starting to go up, right? We're seeing a little bit of recovery with holiday gift season, that kind of thing. But as that sales rank shot up, we also saw the new seller count shoot up. And so right now we're at almost an all time high recently. See pretty much matching the recent all time high on this 90 day graph here. And so when the the demand is lower and the supply is higher, going back to your middle school economics, the equilibrium price has to drop. And so on a listing like this, we are already starting to see that price drop. I would expect to see this price continue to drop. One thing that's really interesting that I like to do is comparing it to the price that it was last time there were this many sellers on the listing. So last time there were this many sellers on a listing, it was the middle of July. We had a ton of demand to keep that price artificially high. And then previously, the time before that, when we had 50 sellers on it, the price was 41 
bucks. It was the beginning of spring. So a lot of people were going to buy it. And then the price was able to stay a little bit higher. So when I look at this graph, seeing an increase in sellers isn't the most risky thing here because the price was able to stay decently high last time we did have that many sellers, but we do still see a decrease in price even as that new seller count starts to drop. And we're leaving the season where these are going to be super popular. You can see last kind of holiday season, the sales rank just kept shooting up, which shows me that it's not the most giftable type of item. It's not going to be the fastest seller during the holiday season. And so it could be a little bit risky. When you compare that though, to a listing like this one right here, it's an advent calendar. It's going to make a lot of sense that we might see more people sell this product. You'd be dumb to be trying to sell an advent calendar in the middle of you know August, July, that kind of thing. And what's really interesting is on a listing like this, we can zoom out to the full year. We see a huge increase in the number of new sellers, which usually would be a runaway. Don't ever sell this product. There's too much competition is what a lot of people would be afraid of. But when we check out this listing here, we saw a basically an equal rise in the number of sales that were happening on this listing, right? Which makes sense. We're getting closer and closer to Christmas. People are going to start buying these more and more. And so the demand is there to meet the supply, right? The last one, we didn't really have any changes in demand to meet the increase in supply. This one, we see a big increase in supply, but we also see a massive increase in demand, right? So we've gone from over the last couple months here, we've gone from like 100K in grocery, which is not a fast selling product at all. And now we're all the way down to 2000 sales in grocery, which is over 1000 sales a month on seller up there. We can also see that last Christmas, this advent calendar right here, I think even lower than it was in the top 1000 basically grocery products on Amazon, which is going to be a super fast seller. Last year, we saw a huge increase in sellers, but the price stayed up because the demand was so much higher. So don't ask yourself how much competition is too much. Oh, there's 50 sellers on this listing. I can't sell it. Oh, there's five sellers on this listing. I can't sell it. It's much more so about what happened last time there was this number of sellers. And do I think that this listing can allow for the number of sellers that's currently on the listing, right? So if it's artificially high, there's nothing that's going to keep the price high. You're definitely going to see a decrease in price unless you see something like this huge increase in demand along with supply. So if you're following along with an example product at this point, you know that the price is stable on this listing, similar to this listing we looked at here. You also know that you have enough profit or ROI based on the volume of your listing. So it's a super fast seller. You can look for lower, slow sellers got to be higher, right? And then you also have checked and made sure that the competition isn't going to make the price of your item drop. So there's a couple other things that we want to check before we go ahead and pull the trigger on this listing here. And I know it seems like a lot when we're breaking it down into this video, but it's really going to become second nature for you, especially as you start sourcing more and more products. So the next thing we want to check for is to make sure that you can actually get a piece of the pie, right? A lot of new sellers, and I made this mistake when I was an early on seller, I lost about $5,000 because I didn't know this mistake that I'm about to show you right now. And what that mistake is looking into the buy box statistics down here on seller and confirming that you yourself can make sales on this product, right? So I pull up this example of a product where we can see that of the last 90 days, about 99% of the sales have been hogged by Amazon, right? So if you hop into a listing like this and you see a uh, one seller, it's maybe it's Amazon, maybe it's, you know, it's a really big high feedback seller. They've got 90, 95% of the buy box rotation. That's going to be a good sign that they're artificially hogging the buy box, whether they own the brand, it's Amazon themselves. In this case, you want to avoid listings like that. A good cutoff number I like to look for is about 75% or higher. It's going to be a red flag in my mind. Another thing you can do is check out the keep a chart down here and up on the top, it's going to show you who is getting the buy box when. And so in this case, we can see basically anytime the Amazon's in stock, they're going to pretty much be hogging the buy box the whole time. You might see other listings where a certain seller might be in stock, but they're not getting the buy box for whatever reason, right? So that shows me that the buy box is rotating. So for example, when you go back over to these slides we were looking at earlier, if we head down to the buy box statistics, you can see a much more even distribution of sales split between a ton of different sellers here. You can see good old fund in my college. There is a classic storefront name. They're getting some sales on this listing. Lots of other seller feedback counts and seller names that indicate that you don't necessarily have to be a really big seller to end up getting any buy box rotation on this listing, right? Another thing that you want to look out for, if you're planning to merchant fill your products, where you're going to ship directly to the customer, you can go ahead and enter type down here. I'm just going to go ahead and simplify the rest of this stuff right here. And so when we do this, we can go ahead and sort by who's winning the most sales and what kind of fulfillment were they? So in this case, a lot of the top sellers are all FBA sellers. We have to get a little bit down the list before we start seeing some FBM sales though. And so when I look at this chart right here, we can definitely make a bunch of sales on this as third party sellers, but we might have a little bit of trouble making sales as merchant filled sellers. As you can see, we have to scroll pretty far down to start seeing those merchant filled offers there. The other thing you want to think about in terms of making sure you can get a piece of the pie is avoiding listings where the brand themselves is already selling it. So for example, you can see this brand is called Emma. You can also see that seller name down here on seller. If you go ahead and scroll through these, where it's really interesting is there's quite a few other sellers on this listing. I really think that's a bad idea to sell on any listing that the brands themselves sell on. And so I would not be surprised to see all 44 of these other sellers who besides Emma at some point are going to get an IP complaint where they get kicked off the listing. It's well within the brand's right to kick you off a listing if they don't want you to sell that product. So it's our job as sellers to avoid listings where the brand is selling it, avoiding listings where 
where there's like consistently only one seller. And so those are a lot of the things that I'm going to look out for in terms of keeping my account health safe. And by the way, if you're ever unsure if a brand is going to IP complain or not, there's this super cool free resource. Seller Journal Greenlight is just a free website. And you can go ahead and type in a brand name. So Kong, super infamous for being an IP complaining brand. When we zoom in, we can see that this brand is well known for taking legal actions against sellers of their product. So it's just one other kind of vote of confidence you can get if you've never sold a brand before. It's a good idea just to check a database like that. You can also use something like IP alert if you just want to have it embedded on your screen there. But it's really important to make sure you're not listing items for the brand themselves are on the listing. The last couple of things you want to do to validate that your product is legit is make sure that you have the exact same product. So for example, I've got just like a vitamin product pulled up. Something I like to do, especially with grocery and vitamins and that kind of stuff. A lot of times there'll be like new packaging on a different website. So for example, here's that product over on walgreens.com. It looks the same at first glance, but what I always like to do, especially if it's my first time sourcing a product, I'm going to go ahead and go over here and check out the nutrition facts. If it's a food product, the label, if you can see like a UPC in the picture, that's even better. You can match like the UPC to something on an Amazon listing. In this case, I don't think we've got the UPC, but you could just match it up to the UPC that's showing on seller ramp up here. Like I was saying, the other thing you want to do is make sure that this picture looks the same. So I like to just memorize these little percentages. So I'm just gonna say 25, 26, 32, right? So if I see 25, 26, 32, perfect. We probably have the same exact product here. We just want to make sure that especially if it's like updated packaging or anything like that, you don't want someone to be taking the wrong supplement or the ingredients changed. And that can cause some really big headaches for people, especially if it's like ingestible products. You want to make sure that you're keeping the customer safe on that kind of stuff, right? So always confirm that the nutrition label, the UPC, all that kind of stuff is the same. So now that we know specifically what to look for every time we're finding products, I want to break down some specific red flags that can cost you thousands. Some of these product red flags aren't super obvious if you're brand new to Amazon. So I'm going to break down all the common traps that will lead you to losing money if you're not aware of these. So this first product right here, a lot of times when you hear people complaining about price tanking, or if you've been selling on Amazon and you're running into some products, you buy it and the price goes way down before you even get to send it into Amazon. A lot of times this is going to be the cause. And I found this exact item right here. Our team actually stumbled across this item and we caught this red flag luckily. But if you check this item out here, you will notice that over the last couple months here, let's even go to the last three months here, the price has gone from about 35 bucks way up to 48 and then down to as low as $12. So we definitely did not want to be on an item like this. But the big red flag on this listing that you need to look out for is just simply the number of increasing sellers. So let's say you're sourcing this item and it's the middle of April, something looks something like this it would be probably very profitable, right? It's just some Pyrex container, something like that. Even if you're paying 20 bucks for them, if you're being able to sell them for 40, you're going to make a good amount of money there, right? But it's important to consider the past history of the item whenever you're sourcing something. So from here, what I'm going to do is figure out what the price was last time there were 12 sellers on the listing as the, you know, the seller count is increasing. I want to figure out what is that reasonable price for the item now that there's 12 sellers going back to simple supply and demand. Now that there are 12 sellers on this listing, there has never been 12 sellers on this listing ever before. So that tells me that this price should go to unprecedented lows on a listing like this, which in this case would have been lower than $27. So even there right away, if you're paying 20 bucks for this set, you would know to avoid it. And then it looks like it even went lower and lower until it kept going down to $12 at this point. So on the flip side of something like that, I just want to show you the different example here. I found this Lego set here. I think it's retired or something like that. But if you were on this listing, let's say last holiday season right here, this price would have gone way down. But something I hear a lot of beginners be a little bit concerned about is when should I lower my prices? When should I stick around and see if the price is going to come back up? So something like this, see how the seller count is increasing and it's literally never been this high. So there's no precedent to, for me to know whether or not the prices are ever going to come back up. Should I wait around? In this case, it probably just sell the item. Something like this, even if you did source it, see it right here and the seller count was increasing super, super quickly. It went down to about $45 there for a little bit, but we had that historical precedent here where we can see that I guess last holiday season or the holiday season before last, the price went to about 45 bucks, did almost the same thing last holiday season. And then because it was such an in demand hot item, price went right back up. Same thing happened this past holiday season. I don't know if we got the same level of kind of jump up there, maybe a few dollars more expensive holiday season before last, but that just to show you there, look for that kind of historical precedent on an item. If we're sourcing and we see a seller increase last time there were 12 sellers on this listing, maybe last time it was 30 bucks and we're still profitable. I would pull the trigger if in this case, it's never been that popular. So it's probably going to stay price tanked for a while. Hopefully that makes sense. That's something that a lot of beginners will fall into is buying those price inflated items like that Pyrex set. So this next thing I want to go ahead and break down for you is basically just about getting IP complaints. So if you sell a product and the brand doesn't want you on that listing, it's well within their rights to kick us off the listing usually. So you want to look out for some simple red flags here. The main red flag on this listing, if you ever see a super flat buy box price line like this on the Keepa chart, that typically means that it's somewhat controlled. 
you can also go into data buy box statistics and we can see that there's going to be about 100 percent buy box rotation given to pattern even though amazon themselves is on this listing as well not even amazon can beat this seller if you zoom out there's only ever been one seller on this listing for quite a while and we can see back here last september or so it seems like there were a few different sellers on this listing and they kicked them all off at once you can see it right there where they just all vanish probably ip complaint and then pattern came back on being the only seller so if you ever see something like that you see a super flat price line buy box statistics showing a hundred percent probably going to be an ip complaint and especially if you see one to two sellers consistently no more than that it even looks like maybe a couple sellers right here tried to hop on momentarily potentially got an ip complaint or i guess it's just amazon in this case they hopped on made some sales and kicked themselves out and then in this case we had pattern as the seller they're one of the biggest sellers on amazon so if you ever see them proceed with caution they have some exclusive deals with some brands so if you ever see a product where the brand name up here ritual is the same name as the seller name ritual us and that typically means that is the brand owner on the listing and you want to stay far away from those listings so pretty simple red flag there if you see the listing being controlled by one seller consistently or the brand itself is selling the listing avoid it you're probably going to get an ip complaint so let's head on to this next one here typically you're going to want to avoid listings with amazon on it that's a pretty standard beginner red flag thing so looking at this listing right here when we check out the keepa chart we can see that there's a ton of orange on this listing that means amazon is dominating this listing we can also see that there's only been a couple different sellers on this listing so maybe no one's ever even tried to come in here compete with amazon but it doesn't seem like anyone's really been able to beat them sometimes you will see listings like this one right here where amazon is all over the listing but as we're mousing along the keep a chart you can see how it changes from yellowish to orange to blue up there at the top that's showing me over time who's getting the buy box so who's making the sales at that time and the fact that amazon is on this listing but they're sharing the buy box tells me that this is a listing that i would want to sell on even though amazon is on it something like this amazon has a hundred percent of the buy box except for you know that little chunk right there they might have just been out of stock or something like this we've got several sellers on the listing and we've got several different sellers getting buy box so if we go to data buy box statistics right there we can see amazon's getting the majority of the sales compared to other sellers but these guys are still making plenty of sales and on a listing that several thousand times a month obviously that's not for this specific variation that's for all of these different shoes here but that still tells me that there's probably a good amount of sales going to the third-party sellers on this listing so you look out for that typically you want to stay away from listings that amazon is on but a lot of beginners are going to be scared of amazon listings so if you go in and go the extra mile and you pay attention to the buy box statistics you'll be able to make a little bit more money than your less educated competition there so this next red flag here is just a classic ip complaint so we talked about it a little bit where we had those listings where there's only one seller dominating it brand is selling it we also have listings like this one where you can see over time the seller account was working its way up all the way up to about 17 sellers at one point and then in may here a bunch of sellers got kicked off a cliff they were all gone and then there was just nobody selling on this listing except for a couple sellers here so if you ever see this where it's just immediately all at once a lot of people getting kicked off of a listing that is an ip complaint so you'd have to appeal it with invoices on all, all that good stuff if the brand doesn't want you to sell on the listing you might get stuck with some of that inventory so it's also important that you know the distinction between an ip complaint and when it just starts selling quickly so this is a decent example right here where it goes from 12 sellers and you can see it count its way down to nine sellers if this had gone from 12 to nine in a heartbeat maybe i would think of that as an ip complaint you can see right here went from, from 17 to 2 all at once that's definitely an ip complaint here we're just naturally stepping its way down that's probably just sellers selling out so if you ever see a big decrease in sellers make sure that it is a, not a complete cliff if it's just very gradual even if it's fast and one by one sellers are getting going out of stock those can be awesome listings because it means it's selling fast you might have a little bit less competition to look out for so this last red flag that i want to go ahead and break down for you guys is talking about buy box suppression i know this is another thing that trips up a lot of beginners so if we look at this listing right here compared to some of those other listings we've been looking at where we've got that nice add to cart button if you shop on amazon a lot you probably just click the add to cart button all the time in this case the buy box on this particular product is suppressed meaning that the buyers who want to buy this product have to go in and click see all buying options and then manually pick one of those sellers themselves so that is something you want to think about on these listings where if you are selling on one of these listings typically you're going to need to have the lowest fba price or at least be tied for the lowest fba price and so sometimes these lists listings can cause really fast decreases in price. So if I'm looking at a listing like this, I have the buy box option selected right here. We can zoom out and it probably has one. Yeah. So back there, you can see that purple line there where there was a buy box. And then ever since January or so, there has not been a buy box. So this particular listing wouldn't necessarily be as big of a red flag as something like this listing right here, where we've had a buy box for quite a while. And then very recently here within the last couple of days, the buy box has gone completely away. This is going to cause a slowdown in the number of sales. And then it'll also be a 
exaggerated on. This is like literally number one in shoes. So it's going to be much more exaggerated on some different products that you find that have a buy box get suppressed. So just before you buy anything that is buy box suppressed, make sure that they consistent pattern of being suppressed. So in this case, there has been no buy box has been sellers on it for well over a month. And it seems to be still consistently moving a little bit, especially based on the number of sellers decreasing there recently. Seems like people might be buying this for $45. Comparing that to this people, we don't have the demand proved that somebody would does want to buy this product with no buy box. And it's also going to slow down the sales velocity. So if you ever see a product where the buy box has recently disappeared, make sure that you're either buying way less or you've looked at the past and seen last time the buy box went away. Was there a pattern of the sales decreasing and going down and the price goes down on the item? A lot of times when you see items like this where the buy box goes away, you'll start to see the price decrease as sellers just have to lower their prices to be that next guy in line. So basically moral of the story here is if you're going to buy something that is buy box suppressed, make sure that's consistent and that it didn't just happen because a lot of times if it just happened within the last week, last month, the price is going to make its way down. So be on the lookout for that as well. So now you're well prepared to buy profitable inventory, but what happens after we buy that inventory? And so now that you have that profitable product in hand, you're going to go ahead and ship this product off to Amazon. That's going to cost you about 40 cents a pound, which is extremely cheap. Amazon has partnered shipping rates for us as Amazon sellers. This is something that I used to think was going to hold me back a bunch as a seller. It's very rarely an issue in terms of shipping costs. When you do ship those items off to Amazon FBA, it's going to take about one to two weeks to make your first sales and anywhere from two to four weeks for everything to completely check in, finish shuffling around at different fulfillment centers and all that good stuff. So the way it works is you're going to tell Amazon which products you have. You're going to take an FN SKU label, like the one that's underneath that probiotic that I have as an example, and then you're going to slap that label over the barcode. After you've labeled all your products, you're going to go ahead and box them up together. You can mix different products together however you want. Whatever you can do to get your boxes close to 50 pounds, that's going to save you on shipping. And then after you box it all up, you're going to schedule a UPS pickup for them to come and pick up those boxes for you. I was driving boxes to UPS for way too long, so I don't want that to be you. Don't make the same mistake as me. It costs you like six bucks, do it through your UPS account and you can get these picked up. And I always like to say that the first time you make a shipment feels like rocket science, but on the second, third and all the future shipments you do after that, you're going to feel silly for not being able to figure it out the first time. And similar to the ungating we were looking at earlier, if you need a little bit of handholding on making your first shipment, I have a completely detailed step-by-step -step process on sending these shipments into Amazon. I just didn't want to make this video boring by showing you cardboard boxes and throwing stuff together. So on your quest to find those profitable items as well, I want to break down how you can make your first sales as soon as possible possible and make those sales way, way faster than the average new Amazon seller would. So what we've been talking about pretty much all day is online arbitrage. But at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that retail arbitrage going to outlet stores, Marshalls, whatever stores you can get your hands on is going to be a great way to get proof of concept. And in fact, if you want to make your first sale on Amazon, literally the exact same day you get your seller account open, you're going to go to one of those discount stores. You're going to scan items on the shelf using the seller amp app, and then you're going to come home and you're going to list those products via merchant fulfillment. And what merchant fulfillment is or FBM is whenever your item sells, you ship the item directly to the customer, which obviously requires more work, but it allows you to test items much, much faster. And you can place test orders on these different items that you are finding via online arbitrage and get a proof of concept much faster, sometimes even before that online sale has ended. And you can ship that item that you found in store or online directly to the customer within a much smaller time horizon, which lets you move your money faster, test the concept, know if you can buy more items of something that's on sale. And and it's really just going to let you run circles around people who are not willing to do the hard work of shipping items out directly to customers. The other thing you want to do to really keep the momentum is to set a daily spend goal. So set the daily goal where whether it's $5 or $5,000, you want to set a minimum goal for what you're going to spend on products every single day. And this is going to keep you accountable. It's going to keep you on track because at the end of the day, for about every dollar you spend, you're going to turn it into roughly $2 in revenue on Amazon. So if you want to be a $10,000 a month Amazon seller, you spend $5,000 a month, which breaks down to a little over $150 a day. So if you look at it that way, your goals become much more achievable. And it's a great metric for you to hit every day so that you can see the progress and you know that you're going to be on track to hitting your goals. As you're starting to source these items as well, I want to give you a quick checklist on what your items need to look like for them to be good. Take notes on this, write it down, put it on a sticky note next to your computer, whatever you're going to be looking at while you're sourcing products. So $3 profit, 35% ROI. Those are some pretty standard profit metrics that I like to look at, and that's per unit. I'll also like to bump my ROI criteria either down or up, depending on how risky I think the item is. For example, women's shoes have extremely high return rates. And so I look for 45% ROI. On the flip side, grocery items literally cannot be returned on Amazon a lot of times. So there's no risk of return. There's no risk of losing some of my profit. So I might go down to something like 25% ROI. You also want the item to be selling at least 30 times a month. You 
want Amazon to not be selling that item or at least checking the buy box statistics, really getting into the weeds. But if Amazon is not on the buy box statistics, then you can sell that item. You want the item to have consistent pricing. A very common mistake new sellers make is when they're buying something that's way more expensive than normal. Make sure that your product is profitable at the average prices over the last 90 or 30 days. You also want at least three star rating or more so that your product's not gonna get a ton of returns. It's not gonna break in shipping. People don't hate it because at the end of the day, the products typically don't matter, but you don't wanna be selling products that people don't like. They're gonna give you bad feedback or they're gonna cause reverse logistics problems. On that same thread, I don't like shipping easily breakable items because it again will create more returns. It's gonna create headaches in your business. And there's much easier low hanging fruit than shipping easily breakable glasses and all that kind of stuff. And the last thing I like to look for on my items is avoiding hazmat products or at least being aware if they are hazmat, you're not gonna be able to send them into Amazon FBA, especially as a new seller. You can get approval, but that can take some time. And so while you're sourcing, make sure you check the seller amp alerts tab. It'll tell you if it's hazmat or dangerous goods. Just be aware that you can't send those into Amazon FBA. And as you're looking through this checklist, you will not make money unless you remember this. Very rarely are the best items that you find going to be good items at retail price. You're going to need to leverage massive discounts using things like coupons, cashback, gift cards, all the kind of stuff that we were looking at today in the live sourcing portion of the video. You're going to need to be able to leverage all those discounts. Finding your item with these discounts on sale is not going to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy to achieve financial freedom. If it was, everyone would have it. But what you really need to remember is that finding your 100th item is much, much, much easier, magnitudes easier than finding that first item. And that's why most people give up in this business and never make it to the point where it's easy to find that hundredth, thousandth, ten thousandth profitable item. As you start making some sales, you might start wondering, hey, I think my item should be selling a little bit faster. And after you do make those first sales, you might want to think about getting a repricing software. And what these do is they automatically change your prices within a preset rule. So for example, if I have a product that I'm profitable at $12 or more, I might be okay with a software changing my price around automatically for me so that I can stay competitive. And this is where my software recommendation for Be Cool comes into play. It's about 25 bucks a month. It can monitor a ton of listings for you. And it's going to do that every 15 minutes to make sure that your prices are matching the buy box price or whatever criteria you want to give to the repricer. For example, I like to raise my prices every night at 2 a.m. using this repricing software. That way, if anyone else is using a repricing software that matches my price, everyone's price goes up and we all start the next day more profitably. So there's a lot of customization you can do with with this repricing tool. I have full repricing rule breakdowns on my channel you can check out. But if you're struggling to make those first couple sales and you know you have good inventory, it could be beneficial for you to get a repricer. So with all this in mind so far, how are we actually gonna scale this business? The most obvious way is finding more items. More items, more profit, pretty obvious, shouldn't have to state it. But every item you find is an opportunity to buy it again. And this is where most people get it wrong and think that this business is a limited time opportunity or something that you can't leverage over and over again because you're gonna be able to store every single item you've ever found on a Google Sheet. And then it's as simple as filtering back down to the sales that you love whenever those sales are back, right? So if you source 20 products at Nike.com during a 25% off sale, and let's say that 25% off sale doesn't come back around until three months later, that's okay. Three months later, bang, you get to buy, you know, 5, 10, 15, however many of those products are still profitable. All you have to do is filter your list down to items that you've already sourced profitably in the past. And that is where you really start to see a ton of scalability in this business. Not only does sourcing products get easier, but starting a business is about buying your time back. Or in my mind, at least it should be because you don't want to start a business to buy yourself an extra nine to five or a nine to nine, a 24 seven, whatever you end up working with your business. Two things are going to allow you to buy your time back are prep centers, which are businesses. They're third party logistics companies that allow you to ship your items to them as a middleman, so to say. And then they're going to ship those items off to Amazon for you. I'll break down how that works. The other thing you're going to be able to leverage is using virtual assistants. So I've built a team of virtual assistants from the Philippines you can pay anywhere from three to eight bucks an hour and they're going to run your business for you. So I've reduced my personal workload down to less than an hour a day using these two things. And it all starts with finding a prep center. This is going to be your first step in finally outsourcing your Amazon business. It just starts with a simple Google search. It sounds dumb, literally just Google Amazon FBA prep center. It's even better if you can add Amazon FBA prep center plus a sales tax free state. And this is something that I wish I had done way sooner. I was starting my Amazon business in a state with 10% sales tax. So every time I bought 
bought a $10 item, I was paying $1 per unit, but instead I should have immediately gotten a prep center open in a state like Montana, Delaware, New Hampshire, states where there is no state sales tax. That way, whenever I buy a $10 item, I can ship it off to them. I can pay them the $1 to prep the item for me. And so then I've paid the exact same amount of money, but I've also done no work. And you can see this also gets even more fun when you're buying an $80 item where you would have paid $8, but instead you save $7 and you don't do work. So it's a very rare case of something in business that saves you time and money. Typically the things that save you time cost money. And these services are gonna cost you anywhere from one to $2 a unit per item that they send in for you. As you're looking for a good prep center, make sure that they are in a sales tax free state, make sure that they have kind of good communication. So you're gonna wanna say, hey, who's my point of contact? How big is your prep center? How many other clients do you have? You need to get a feel for how good a care they're gonna take of you. You also wanna make sure that they're gonna be shipping the products on time. See what kind of guarantees they have. Sometimes a prep center will like pay you or they'll give you a discount or something like that if they don't ship on time. So those are very important, obviously. To set up this prep center, you're gonna to want to hop on a Zoom call with them and ask them a couple questions. So number one, are any sites banned from shipping to your prep center? Sometimes websites will have been absolutely abused by someone who used that prep center before. Someone was making tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars at a website and they may have banned that address. So if you like to source products from, let's say, Kohl's, you say, hey, has anyone at your warehouse recently received a Kohl's package? And there's a good shot they're gonna say yes, but you just don't want them to have your favorite website banned. You also wanna ask how often they ship out. So typically prep centers will ship out inventory often. For us, we have a lot of inventory showing up all the time. They're just kind of always working on getting it shipped out. If you have a little bit less inventory, they might say, hey, we'll ship out all the inventory that's at our warehouse every Wednesday or whatever it is, right? Every prep center does it differently. Just ask them how often you're gonna get your stuff shipped out so you can have a good picture for your cash flow. You also wanna see if they have any minimum. So, hey, if I ship 10 units, can you ship those into Amazon for me? A common minimum that you'll see at prep centers is 100 units for them to go ahead and send that into Amazon, which Man, might sound overwhelming if you're a beginner right now, but it really isn't too hard to find 100 units profitably, especially if you're at the level where you're ready for a prep center. You also want to go ahead and ask what fulfillment centers they ship to. Depending on the fulfillment center that they ship, you may have a really bad experience, really slow check-in times. A lot of items are going missing at that fulfillment center. So it's good to ask that, see if you need to avoid using that prep center simply because of the Amazon fulfillment center that they ship to. You might also want to ask if they do merchant fulfillment. That's typically pretty rare for a prep center, but if they do, that can be an awesome asset for you to use in your business. And you can also ask if they handle any removal orders. That's also a little bit of a rarer one. If they handle any of the like returns that you get back from Amazon or any of the damaged inventory that you might get, a lot of times you are still gonna have to take care of that yourself. The prep center will do all the brand new stuff, but there's a good shot you might still have to do that. If you find a prep center that does those two for you, you have found an awesome prep center. And so those are great questions to ask just to see if they might be a standout prep center for you. The next aspect of the business that can be outsourced is by hiring virtual assistants. So virtual assistants kind of just a fancy word for anyone who works virtually on your business. Typically, this is going to be from countries like the Philippines, Pakistan, Colombia, anywhere where the cost of living is much lower, which allows you to hire fantastic, talented help for anywhere from three to eight dollars an hour, depending on their experience level, how much of an expert they are in the task. And so where this comes into play with Amazon is that you can hire people to do your product sourcing for you. That was the first person that I hired in my business. You can also hire people to manage the admin side of your business. So doing all the ungated and any of the kind of the bookkeeping paperwork type jobs that you want to do in the company that just does not simply make you money. It's generally a pretty good idea to be outsourcing those tasks that are not actively producing income. I've hired the vast majority of my virtual assistants through a website called onlinejobs.ph and that's basically just a marketplace. Think of it like Indeed, Upwork, any of the job marketplaces that you see in the US except it's only for Filipino workers. And so you can go on there, look for anyone who has experience in online arbitrage, selling on Amazon, on using Keepa, using Selleramp, whatever it is, you can probably find someone to do the job for you. And I've also used this website to hire virtual assistants for businesses, even outside of Amazon. It's a great place to get qualified, very high value help for your business. And so once you go through that website, I'd recommend making a job posting on online jobs, and you're going to get a ton of job applications. You'll see what I mean when you make a job application. You'll get probably hundreds of applications. These jobs are very highly sought after. And so what I like to do is give them a sample test. So when they reply to my job posting, if their resume looks good, if they have a little bit of experience, especially in the Amazon industry, I'll send them a sample test. And all this looks like is it's a quick test of their Keepa knowledge. It's a quick test for them to find a couple example leads or even provide any past work that they've done so that I can kind of see how they think, what kind of leads they like to find. Because I typically don't like to hire virtual assistants who are brand new to the industry, but I want to see how they think and especially how they show their work on these different tests. From the ones who do well on that sample test, I will interview them. This will usually be a 15 minute interview. I just want to talk to them, ask them what 
what they think about selling on Amazon, try to get a feel for how passionate they are about the job or how eager they are to come in, learn how you run your Amazon business and how they can fit in and help you. From there, I go ahead and trial week, usually anywhere from two to three virtual assistants per hiring round. And a lot of times you'll find that one virtual assistant is way better than the other. And so you can keep that one virtual assistant. Or if you find two or three great hires, then congrats, you've got the starts of an awesome online arbitrage team. But one thing I want you to remember is that hiring virtual assistants is not a magic bullet. It's not going to solve the problems that you have in your business. If you don't know how to find products yet, if you're struggling to spend a couple thousand dollars a month, hiring virtual assistants is not going to fix that. For me, it made sense when I was spending about $20,000 a month on product. I was a full-time student in college, just trying to find time here and there, was spending great money by myself, and I simply needed more time spending the money that I had available to me. You're also going to want to provide a bonus for performance for your virtual assistants. The best way that I've found to do this is to profit share with your virtual assistants. So at the end of every month, I run a report to see how much each virtual assistant made me, and then I pay them a certain percentage of that profit. And typically, it's a good idea to make that percentage go up the more profit they make you to kind of bracket that out. Because through this process, you really need them to understand how you source, how you think about sourcing products. And in the early stages, it's going to be maybe even more work than it was without a virtual assistant. That's what you need to remember. But after enough time hopping on Zoom calls together, showing them why you do or do not like the leads that they're finding, they're going to be a rock star virtual assistant. They're going to be a great addition to your team. And that's going to help you be much more valuable with the time that you're spending in your business. And if the cost of hiring a virtual assistant is prohibiting your growth right now, something I love is hiring a virtual assistant with one of your Amazon seller friends. If you don't have any of those Amazon seller friends, it's time to hop into some free groups, start interacting on social media. But hiring a virtual assistant to share with somebody can be a great way to make it much more affordable and sort of act like a leads list of sort that you control. And it gives you great experience hiring your own team members that will be eventually a very valuable skill as you build a legit team that runs the vast majority of the business for you. Hiring virtual assistants in my business has been massive, but I would not want to rush into it if I were a new seller. I want to emphasize that it's not the magic bullet, but it is going to be the long-term vision for your business where you no longer have to touch products. You don't have to see them. You don't even have to buy the products that you're making profit on until the profit's already hit in your bank account. So with all that in the rear view, let's talk about what your next steps are and give you some actionable advice for you to go out and start making a difference in your life by selling on Amazon. So the first thing you need to do, super obvious, go get your account applied for right now. Hopefully it's already in the works. You're working on getting that letter in the mail or getting your phone call scheduled. However they want to do it with you, it can vary from person to person, but you need to go get that account applied for. The next thing you need to do is spend $100 as soon as possible, whether that is by going out to stores, selling used books that are on your shelf at home, or doing online arbitrage like we've been doing today. You need to spend $100 as soon as possible, very achievable amount of money for you to spend, and you need that proof of concept as soon as possible. To spend that $100, you're probably going to need Selleramp and Keepa. Those are the only two tools that you need, so go ahead and activate those today. Like I was just talking about, if you want a super fast proof of concept, instead of doing online arbitrage, go hit a store today, scan the items on the shelf with the Selleramp app, and buy anything that has decent sales and decent profit on the app after you factor in any discounts, anything like that that you can get in store. And then you should also go ahead and check any of the brands that you can get auto ungated in. If you check the link down below, I dropped even more free value for you. It's my completely free downloadable course, a couple more videos for you to learn from in there, as well as some PDFs and an auto ungating spreadsheet. So that includes 1800 products where you can go and get auto ungated in those brands simply by plugging in those ASINs. And it'll show you all the opportunity that's available to you because you probably don't believe how much is going to be available to you right now. And a couple action items, if you're really wanting to grow fast with this business, you need to be interacting on social media, on Discord, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is, post your progress as you go through this business, you are going to attract similar people to you. And as you're sharing your progress, whether that's box photos, whether that's your first sales coming out, your first month results, or even your first year's results, if you ever want to tag me in that post on Twitter, Instagram, I would love to share that and get you in front of other Amazon sellers to hopefully find your network of sellers. Because what you need is at least two or three other Amazon sellers who have your back. You can bounce ideas off them. They can say, hey, there's this sale going on. I know you like to source in the shoes category. And you can say, hey, I know you like makeup. There's this awesome makeup sale going on. And that's going to make everyone in that circle much, much richer with this business, it's going to make you way more money if you have some friends to talk with. If you don't have a place where you can start trying to make these connections, join the free community down below. That's also in that free course that I just talked about with all the PDFs, spreadsheets, all that kind of stuff. There's a free Discord server in there as well. Over 50,000 Amazon stars that you can start interacting with. Check out the free checklist. Check out the spreadsheet that I was just talking about as well. And then start storefront stalking literally right now. Go through the reverse sourcing process that we did in this video today. Start looking through other storefronts. Start noticing which brands sell well on Amazon which brands you might be able to get coupons on and then 
paper trade those products until your account is ready. So pretend that you've bought those products, track how they do over time, and that's gonna give you a massive leg up over the competition that's just kind of sitting around twiddling their thumbs while they wait for everything to get into place. And since you're still watching this far into the video, please let me know down below if I can answer any questions for you. Also hit the subscribe button, the like button, that kind of stuff helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. I also wanna let you know if you do have significant capital to invest in starting an Amazon business, I do have pay resources that you can leverage down below. We've helped literally thousands of sellers build a full-time income on Amazon through the FBA roadmap, which is our step-by-step -step course with over 20 hours of content that covers things I never talk about publicly, as well as a private community discounts on sales tax-free prep centers that we've gone ahead and found for you, and weekly Zoom calls with myself and Miles, who is the other part of the FBA roadmap, also a seven-figure Amazon seller. But once again, I really appreciate you watching this video all the way through. I hope you got a tremendous amount of value from this, and I'm super excited to see you go out and sell your first $10,000 on Amazon. My comments and DMs are always open if I can help you out with anything before then, but I really appreciate you watching this video, and I will see you next time.